Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and welcome back to another episode review for last night's episode of The Walking Dead. This was Season 7, Episode 5. It was Episode 5. I almost botched that. Anyway, this was Season 7, Episode 5, entitled Go-Getters, all right? And uh, I did a prediction for this episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, obviously, back in Thursday, I will leave a link in the description below if you guys want to check that out. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, I usually do my reviews in a style of like a recap, and then I sort of give my thoughts and opinions on it and stuff like that. But we're just going to breeze through this episode. Uh, we're not even going to look at a recap. You know, this is sort of just what's going on in my mind right now how I felt about this episode, some scenes that I thought were good, and some really good character development scenes that I think will really play a large part into what happens next, you know, in The Walking Dead. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, this episode in general is a really good testament to the fact that we don't really need, uh, you know, all of the main characters to really make an episode good. You know what I mean? There's lots of opinions going around right now around the internet, uh, about this episode saying that it could be bad some people love it uh, I personally loved it I thought it was great again I thought it was a great testament uh, to us you know to show that we don't need Rick you know and we don't need these key characters like Daryl and you know of course now Negan we don't need these guys in the episodes all the time to make it watchable right we already knew that actually back with episode two of this season with obviously the introduction of the kingdom a brand new group there's only two members that we really knew which was carol and morgan and uh, that episode was still very very good at least in my opinion it was so with that being said this episode was based on the hilltop that was my prediction uh, it was pretty much all on the hilltop now we did actually get to see rick and michonne and carl in uh you know parts of the episode um Michonne and Rick were only in it for like about one scene. We just seen sort of Rick uh, in Alexandria, you know, getting ready to leave. He was going actually on a supply run, which I think will lead into a future episode, you know, probably around episode seven, I want to say, is when we're going to get to see Rick again, you know, him out with Aaron actually scavenging for supplies, uh, you know, to obviously get those supplies so that they can deliver that to Negan as their payment again for the for the week, right? So we know that Negan's coming back soon. And he said that if you guys don't have something interesting for me, somebody's going to die. All right. So Rick's obviously getting out or getting ready to go out rather and, uh, you know, get get some supplies for Negan. I mean, that it just goes without saying. And uh, Michonne didn't really want to go with him because, I don't know, She's she wants to figure stuff out. She wants to figure it out. If that, you know, she can actually do this, if they can actually live this way. There was actually one part where we get to see Carl basically tell Michonne, you know, we can't live this way. And that was actually all in a sneak peek that I actually already reviewed on my prediction. So make sure, again, you guys go check that out. But again, I thought it was a very interesting scene because the scene that basically came after that was, well, I mean, before that, Rick and Aaron ultimately left. There was a little makeout session with Michonne. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we get to see them sort of connect again, um, <laughs> obviously in an emotional way prior to the, uh, you know, the physical way. But um, yeah, we, we, we get to see Carl basically go outside. Uh, he sees Enid or Enid, whatever you want to call her. I don't know how to exactly pronounce her name, but Anyway, she jumps over the wall. She wants to go to the hilltop to see Maggie. Carl said that she he didn't want to go, you know, after her and save her life again like he did before. Uh, there was talk about Glenn there as well. And uh, again, there was a lot of talk, especially with the hilltop, you know, about mourning Glenn and mourning Abraham, where we didn't really get to see that before. You know, we we didn't really get to see that in episode four of The Walking Dead when we first got to see the reintroduction of our group at Alexandria, obviously Rick and everybody. We didn't really get to see them, you know, really mourning Glenn or Abraham. We didn't really get to see them, uh, you know, doing that because they were too focused on everything else. You know what I mean? So to see that from Maggie's perspective back at the hilltop, which is where the episode actually opened, I thought it was a great thing. I really did. I thought that it was, uh, you know, something that they needed to do, but at the same time, it was something that we needed to see, you know, um, because we're all still sort of mourning them as well, in a way, you know, and uh, again, I thought it was great, I really did. And speaking of confrontation, like with Michonne and Carl, we actually get to see a lot of confrontation between Maggie, Sasha, and Gregory, obviously at the hilltop, Gregory being the leader, we all know that, 
Uh, he's a giant dick bag, essentially, okay? He's he, big dick bag, and he's a big coward as well. And we get to see a lot of confrontation between, you know, Maggie and Sasha and Gregory. And Jesus actually is obviously siding with Maggie and stuff too. So we basically get to see that Maggie, you know, is okay. Thank God for that. And her baby did survive. So again, thank God for that. But uh, with that being said, you know, she sort of goes over as soon as she wakes up you know she goes over to glenn's grave and abraham's grave they dug graves for them we later get to see that uh the hilltop actually burns all of their dead instead of burying them so there's a little confrontation there again with gregory and maggie there saying that we burn our dead and stuff like that and then he basically wanted them to you know leave you know go back to alexandria get out of here and uh, Maggie basically says, you know, the doctor said that we could stay here because, you know, he wants to keep an eye on me. And he confronts her with that, saying that, you know, he doesn't have that authorization to make that call and ultimately orders her out of the hilltop, you know. And then she brought up the fact that she had a baby and he basically just shut her down saying, you know, that was your that that's your fault. That's your problem uh, that you have to deal with. You know, that was your mistake. And uh, that's where that scene leaves off. So I thought that was a pretty cold-hearted scene there by Gregory. But again, he's a dick bag. You know what I mean? He's a coward. Uh, he doesn't want to be connected with them whatsoever. He sort of wants them to leave the hilltop so that they have like, uh, what did he call it? Plausible uh, deniability, you know, for the saviors. Basically, he didn't want the saviors to know that he basically hired Maggie and her group to kill the saviors. You know, obviously at that outpost back in season six. So if they don't, you know, catch them anywhere around the hilltop, they're not going to really know, you know, they're not going to be able to put two and two together and see that connection, you know, so it would be safer for Gregory in the hilltop in a way, but at the same time, you know what I mean? You did do that. So take responsibility for that. And, uh, you know, you, you can't just really expect somebody to do something and throw them to the wolves, you know? And then we, of course, get to see a siege scene i don't even know really what to call it but it was middle of the night maggie and sasha were sleeping in the trailer and the doors of the trailer and the windows were all locked and stuff like that and things were happening outside okay walkers were flooding in music was playing in an armored car right there in the middle of the courtyard and basically the saviors just walker bombed the hilltop you know that's basically what just happened and i mean they they ultimately fought it off. You know, Maggie got a tractor in the end. There was a couple of cool scenes where she was running over some zombies. I thought that was really great. I really did that. You know, that was really good action from Maggie. But at the same time, she had to stay off of her feet. And, she, you know, that was the doctor's rules. She didn't want to risk the baby or anything like that. So she came up with this idea of sitting in a tractor. You know, you're staying off your feet. You're not really putting your body through, uh, you know, much by doing that and she took out a huge horde of them and then she squashed the car which ultimately stopped the music and there was scenes there with jesus which i am so excited to see you know this is the first episode in season seven where we actually get to see jesus and this is actually one of the first episodes where we actually get to see jesus sort of be jesus you know from the comic book if you guys read the comic book you guys know that jesus is well i, I don't want to i don't even know what to say like is he parkour like, you know what I mean? Is he a parkourist? Uh, he does a lot of flips, a lot of kicks, and a lot of jumps, and it's all just really, really cool. You know, he has this sort of, uh, I want to say martial arts ability to him, and he's just he's just so cool. You know what I mean? He's sort of like a free runner, and he was taking out a bunch of zombies with kicks, and then, of course, knives, and Sasha was out there helping him on the ground as well. It was a really action-packed scene, and I thought that's what the episode definitely needed, because there was not really a lot of that uh, in this episode, you know, in terms of walk kills and just general badassery but you know seeing uh maggie do that in the tractor and then in combination with that seeing jesus just absolutely hammer everything you know out of that way uh and you know kill the walkers by hand it definitely made it uh way more watchable i guess is what you could say and then there was more scenes again with gregory being a coward and just overall dick bag and uh you know i thought i thought it was really cool you know to, to see gregory like that because he is like that in the comic book as well you know what i mean he's just a general asshole and uh, of course the the saviors came in and there's a bunch of confrontation there with uh you know him asking gregory what was going on they needed to talk uh basically he ended up trying to save maggie and sasha by putting them in a closet he told jesus to put him in a closet um and he ultimately did that but then at the end of the meeting there was simon which was a pretty cool meeting you're just gonna have to watch it there was way too much uh you know conversation going on you know between the two of them 
But uh, at the end of it, basically, Simon says, you know, is there anything else you want to tell me? They really have a pretty good relationship, you know, Simon and Gregory, they do. I, I think they have a pretty good relationship, a pretty good working relationship. You know, he's a coward, and uh, Simon is obviously, you know, the boss, you know. He actually put it to him in a way that says, you know, I'm your Negan, essentially, because that's what Negan wants. And, um, you know, Gregory being a coward and just being like that, I guess it works out, you know, it works out. So at the end of it, he basically says, you know, is there anything else you want to tell me? Gregory says, yes. He plans on actually leading, you know, Simon and the saviors to the closet where he hid Maggie and Sasha. And he gets there, he opens the closet, and they're not there. So he pulls out some liquor, basically says, you know, this was what I wanted to show you, but it really wasn't. He led them to the closet where Maggie and Sasha were supposed to be stashed, and uh, obviously they weren't there, but some liquor was, because Jesus didn't trust Gregory with that, you know, he didn't want to put them in the closet that he knew that he meant because he was afraid that he would be a coward and do what he just did. So he actually put him in a closet, but he put him in a closet in Gregory's own room upstairs. So very smart idea there on Jesus' part, but we all know that Gregory basically just tried to betray them. You know, he just tried to turn them in. Uh, that would have ultimately had them killed and it would not have been good, you know, for obviously Maggie and Sasha, but they're safe. Again, thank God. The baby, dude, that's the last remnants of Glenn. <laughs> there were some more lovey-dovey scenes there with Carl and Enid. Actually, Carl ended up going after Enid after she hopped the wall. He chased her down in a car, and they uh, they obviously continued on their way to the hilltop, and later revealed that Carl actually didn't go there for Enid. He went there because he wanted to attack the saviors. He wanted to attack Negan. Now, we know that in the comic book, as Negan left Alexandria on their first run back from Alexandria, Carl actually hopped into a car, or, or a truck, the back of a truck, and went to the, uh, the the compound, you know, the sanctuary where Negan is, you know, located at, and uh, basically when they opened the car, or they opened the back of the truck there, Carl basically killed a whole lot of saviors, you know? So we didn't get to see that this time with Negan leaving Alexandria last episode, episode four, but we get to see it this time. This was his mission. So he made it to the hilltop, and that's ultimately his plan here. But there's a lot of lovey-dovey connection stuff with Enid uh, riding some roller skates on the way to the hilltop. That Again, you know, they were holding hands and stuff like that. It was all, uh, you know, really cool to see Carl like that. We never really get to see him like that before. Uh, but then at the end, uh, basically, you know, she asked Carl not to go. You know, I don't want you to go. You know, I want you to stay. It's dangerous. You're not going to make it out of there. Even if you do kill a lot of them and if you do kill Negan, how are you going to get out of there? And Carl basically just says, you know, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea how I'm going to get out of there. And, um, you know, he ultimately goes with his plan. But before he left uh, Enid there in the forest, he uh, he kissed her, you know, goodbye. So, again, we get to see a relationship, I think, growing there. It might not grow uh, too much past that because, you know, they sort of kissed. And then Carl sort of left her, you know, saying that... Uh, you know, me doing this, killing Negan, is maybe more important than our relationship, and Enid Enid might take that the wrong way. I don't know. But with that being said, you know, he's uh, he's off to do his thing, and Enid snuck into the hilltop to see Maggie and obviously visit Glenn's grave, which she ultimately ended up doing, which, again, a very emotional moment there. She placed uh, green balloons on his grave, or actually, she placed it on Abraham's grave on accident, and... Uh, you know, she didn't know which one was what, whatever, doesn't matter, but, uh, you know, again, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, Maggie sort of, uh, M Maggie saw her place the green balloons on Abraham's grave, but obviously she didn't want to tell her that because she didn't want to hurt her feelings, and then she brought up that Glenn would have told her that because he was too bad at keeping lies, you know, he always sort of had that problem with the barn and the walkers and stuff like that back in season two, and again, we just get to see, you know, Glenn being brought up uh, in all these conversations with him not actually being there, but we still really get to, you know, feel him, you know, in a, in a way. We, we get to know that he is there, you know, sort of in spirit. He's left sort of an impact with us, you know, even when he's gone, he's still there. And a scene that I thought was really, really good and really, like, um, key in character development for Maggie was when she actually got out of the closet with Gregory. And she punched him right in the face and basically said, you know, we're staying here no matter what, or else we're going to tell them that you had something to do with us killing the saviors. And that was her and Jesus, actually. They both had that plan. They both sort of 
uh, stood up to Gregory. And uh, again, Maggie punched him in the face, basically said, you know, we're staying here. I don't care what you think. And when we're staying here, you're going to call me by my name, not honey, not dear, not Martha. You're going to call me Maggie, Maggie Ree which obviously means she finally took Glenn's last name. I mean, we probably can assume that she probably has last name. It never really came into, uh, you know, play until now because last names really don't matter. But, you know, she's officially going by it now because that's her husband. Glenn Ree is her husband. Obviously, she was Maggie Green, but they got married, uh, well, ish, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but uh, ended up taking his name and saying that her name's now Maggie Ree. So, Again, another throwback to Glenn, you know, another another reference to Glenn. And, um, yeah, man, I, like, I don't know. It's just, it's a way of mourning him at the same time, you know, remembering him. He, it's what Maggie actually said. You know, we don't need objects like this pocket watch, which the pocket watch that Herschel gave Glenn, uh, she actually gave to Enid. And uh, she basically said, you know, we don't need objects to remember them by because we have us. Meaning their memories and, uh, of course, you know, the fact that they survived. The end scene of this episode was really badass because we actually get to see Sasha asking Jesus if she, he can find out where the saviors live, you know, where Negan actually lives, and he basically says, that, you know, one of the trucks that are, you know, leaving here today are going to Sanctuary, you know, they're going to that compound, and he plans on following it now to find out where exactly that is. So, the end of the episode, as all the trucks are driving away, he hops in the back of the truck that's going to Sanctuary, he opens up the liquor that, um, you know, Gregory unintentionally gave to the saviors, and he essentially, you know, takes a drink, starts pouring it all out, you know, just sort of like a big fuck you, if you will, and then at the very end, we get to see Carl in the back of that same truck, he moves a box and says, hey, to Jesus, so... We get to see Carl, you know, sort of taking on his comic book role, you know, of doing that whole stowaway in the truck and then probably shoot them up when he gets there. Uh, I, I thought that was really good, you know what I mean? Does he actually have a gun, though? We have no idea if he does. Did he get his hands on one? Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what his plan is there. You know, I know what it is in the comic book. He takes Abraham's M16 with him and shoots them all up, you know, when he gets there. But does he have a gun now? You know, what, what is he going to use? I'm not too sure. He must have some sort of a plan. I don't think that he would just, you know, run in just being stupid, right? I, I have no idea what his plan could be, though. But we get to see Jesus, you know, see him in the back of the truck say, hey... And then that's where the episode cuts off. So thank you all so much for watching my episode review of Season 7, Episode 5, entitled Go-Getters. I really did enjoy this episode. Again, there are a lot of opinions out there, you know, right now on whether or not this episode was good. I thought it was, and like I said before, it was a good testament to us, uh, you know, to show us that the episodes of The Walking Dead don't always need the main characters in it. With that being said, it did have Rick, it did have Michonne brief moments, but it was just sort of setting them up for, you know... Rick and Aaron going on a run for supplies for the saviors. And again, I thought it was a very good episode. I really did. Again, a lot of badass scenes from the Hilltop characters, including Jesus, which I was really happy to see and hope we see more of, you know, very soon. Uh, or, you know, sooner than later, rather. So, anyway, again, thank you all so much for watching. If you guys want to tune in to my gaming content and everything like that, I do post daily or as often as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, obviously those videos will be continuing tomorrow. But if you guys only watch my Walking Dead videos, make sure you guys tune back in this Thursday for my episode predictions of this week's up-and-coming episode of The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 6, entitled Swear. And this one looks to be all on Tara and Heath, which I'm kind of interested to see, you know, what they're dealing with and, you know, stuff like that. There's a lot of rumors going around that they're meeting a new group and, um, you know, maybe they're going to get their, uh, their, their arms, you know, their, their guns and everything like that that they lost from Negan. Maybe they're going to get them back. Maybe Tara and Heath are going to clutch up. And, you know, uh, well, I mean, come in clutch, I guess, with the guns. So, anyway, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye. Today, we are going to be doing my first impressions on Watch Dogs 2. Now, I did actually end up getting the game yesterday. I downloaded it, played with Randall a little bit. Uh, not, not a whole lot of the single-player campaign. We've been doing a lot of co-op. And that is one really cool thing that I...